it's another game in the KV2. I know that I should have played some different tanks, but again, I have I have a bit of a soft spot for the KV2. I think when I first encountered it, it was one of those like the KV had the KV2 was basically just a turret and a gun option to KV1. I can't honestly recall. It's been that sort of thing is lost in the hazy the hazy mists of time now. And this is a game where I feel pretty pretty confident. I've got 15 minutes to kill before I need to head out the door, before I need to put my shoes on and head out the door. And I think, you know what, a game of World of Tanks will calm me down, it will, you know, smooth over my anxieties and nervousness about things I have to do today. Now, if there's one thing I really, I really should kind of internalise, it's the idea that, um, you should never play a game with other people online to relax. And that's not how you relax. Especially a game like World of Tanks. Sometimes you, you can pray to RNGesus Jesus all you like, and sometimes he abandons you in your, in your hour of need, or your game of need. Well, okay, your 15 minutes of need. And this is one of those situations where I go in, I, f I feel confident because I'm KV2, I'm on top of the tier, I'm on top of the list. There's a TOG2 and everyone loves TOG2s. You can't go wrong with TOG. But, as we're about to see in my duel for the bridge, this is not gonna, you know... Yeah, so first you on this. Fine, no problem, he did no damage to me. I, my shot, I, I obviously angered my Russian ancestors or something and they're, they're not happy with me today. So, I do what I normally do, which is to say, I, wait, I reload, I notice an artillery land right next to me. And that's as good a time as I need to start moving and shooting. I don't even know where that shot went. I, did it even leave the barrel? I, uh, I, so I was getting a bit pissed off at this point. And I'm used to playing a game in the KV2 where either none of my shots land anywhere near where they're supposed to, or I'm basically left on my own to defend the flank. This is one of those situations where both of the things happen at the same time. And it doesn't leave me in a particularly good mood. Um, our team start complaining about. Uh, here we are, Chaffee, report, report to T-34 for pushing my ally. And this Cromwell is giving me so much grief. I don't even... I start playing sloppily, I start just standing there, just daring him to poke his nose out so I can get a good shot at him. But... He doesn't really sort of take the bait. And even then, the shot falls wide. Maybe these accuracy changes in the recent patch are really starting to kick in. So I notice at this point that the north lane is missing all of its defenders, and I figure that that Cromwell is not going to be—he's not going to be a hero. He's not going to try and drive the bridge, drive across the bridge out in the open when there's a chance that I'm still, you know, sitting there guarding it. So I decide to take a gamble, and I think it's always. I feel quietly confident when I'm driving <clears throat> in one direction and everyone else is driving away from where I'm going to. It's like I know something they don't. And what I know is the KV-2 is the best tank in World of Tanks. There is, there is nothing, nothing inspires confidence in your allies and dread in your enemies like seeing a KV-2 drive drive down the road with a mission. And I attract some other tanks who decide that, yeah, now now the KV-2's here, this is... we can rally around the icon of the Soviet people. T-3485, my Russian brother... I don't kill him, but I take out his tracks. And I, the other thing I love about the KV-2 is obviously just how much that is like even if you don't penetrate the derp gun just shreds takes tracks off 
apparently it bounces shots and wait a goddamn second. That's a fucking Cromwell again. He had exactly the same idea I did. Which is good. I mean I've got to respect someone who goes, you know what? I'm not gonna cross this bridge, there's a KV2 there, that's that's stupid. I'm just gonna go around and, you know, hope that he that, that me that he me in this case just you know Critical hit keeps guarding a bridge that no one's going to push. So we both had the same idea at the same time and that's that's it's nice to see my arch nemesis the Cromwell. Okay. Now at this point I'm looking at the time going okay I, I really do need to start you know hurrying up getting ready to go out putting shoes on brush my hair all that stuff. So I start playing I'll be honest a little stupid. I make I, this is this is where I just start making mistake after mistake after mistake, and then I pile some more mistakes on top of that. Then I blend down some mistakes into like a fine a fine sauce and drizzle that liberally over the resulting heap of mistakes that I'm serving up in my restaurant entitled the mistake. Okay, that metaphor kind of got away from me. Gotcha. I can take some satisfaction in getting at least a kill, and it's against my nemesis to Cromwell, who hopefully... I mean, actually, I've got to say, I appreciate that as a medium tank driver, he saw that the situation on the bridge wasn't, re couldn't really end well for him, and decides now is the opportunity to, to join in on the flank push. That's, that's actually quite a nice move, because if I didn't come around this way, I probably would have spent a lot more time sitting on the bridge, defending against something that was never going to happen. I start taking fire, I start looking at the clock, I'm thinking, shit, crap, fuck, I really have to go. Let's just take a shot, and if I just keep moving forwards, they'll have to deal with me, and that will give my team time to do something like that, you know, actually kill things. Now, this, at this point, the enemy base is being captured. The Type T-34 is shooting allies, and... The Type... and our T-3045 is now busy hunting down their last artillery. This is a good move, because... okay, the artillery's gone. Right. Now, the T-3045, there is one tank left on the map, and you can see where it is goes through a bit of a trundle around the cliffs. I start suggesting that, you know, it caps. Other people join in and go, yeah, you know what, cap. There's no way in hell that the T-150 is going to be able to stop you capping. Because, you know, he can't. There's there's just no, he's, he's not going to get there fast enough. And sure, it's a shame to sacrifice, potentially, these other tanks, but it guarantees, guarantees us a victory. Another artillery piece, but well, an SPG goes down. Yeah, as people are saying, just do it, just win. Because this T-150 is clearly taking some names. And I'm not saying that the grill there is not the sort of amazing defender that we need. But in a match between a T-150 and a grill, I kind of favour the T-150 just because I mean, whoever's going to hit get the first shot is probably going to be the winner but I figure a T-150's gun is slightly more accurate and the T-3485 decided fuck it I'm I'm leaving the cap circle because I want to try and kill this guy so it's gone from in a game where we're certain to win to a game where it's now a bit wonky. The girl is lining up a shot over the top of the tank. T-3485 is taking the route that would not flank the T-150 and it looks like this... yeah I started getting angry and like you could have won. This could be over by now. But no and really I should trust I should trust people more but look the route the guy is taking if he went the uh, like the north route and, and got behind him, I go, well, you know, that's a sensible plan. 
But the grill finishes him off. Thank the Lord. <sighs> so yeah, that was game with the KV2. Um, as ever, when I play on this map as KV2, I seem to find myself drawn to defend in the north lane from the bottom side. And again, that was far more stressful than it needed to be. So the moral of the story is, if you need to unwind, don't play World of Tanks. <laughs>